Chapter 4, The Canal and Palace Miro Pasip None of the travels my twin Goemi and I had brought us near to the Canal and Palace. There was one time, though, during the last Akin wine festival, that we almost did, but we didn't manage to reach the palace grounds in time. It could be that we were lucky because, in that unfortunate incident, thousands of Akin lives were claimed in a rage that does not deserve to be remembered. Sweat drenched all over my body. It had been a long journey. I had grown accustomed to the stink that now covered me. When I was still pretending to be sick in the head, hygiene was a challenge, but Goemi tried hard to keep me clean or at least presentable. The horse I had been riding stopped and now would not budge an inch. I decided to jump from my mount and drag the horse with me. There was a tree along the road, and I tied the rope to keep the horse from running away. Although, in its current condition, I doubt if it would have the energy to even think of roaming around. I grabbed fistfuls of grass from a nearby patch and brought them back to the horse to feed it. It felt odd to roam the world alone. I wasn't used to having Goemi separated from me. Ever since Grandma died, we had never left each other's side. Now, all that was gone because of Arden. I could not forgive him, even if I tried. He was the one who dared to take from me, my only family. In the end, however, I lost her because of what I did. All the more reason for me to go on this journey quickly. In the Canellan Palace, I expected that the Emperor would accept me. I would seek an audience with him and ask him to take me into his entourage. I would be a soldier, the way I told Goemi Moon turns ago. When we meet next, who knows, maybe then she would have forgiven me already. Eat fast, I told the horse. It neighed as though it understood what I said. When the grass had been finished off, I walked toward the patch to get some more. Three more times, I fed the horse before I decided to stop and ride my mount. Dust trailed behind me as I kicked the horse. I need to meet the emperor fast. If nobody ever gave importance to me in the past, things would change now. I would be indispensable to the emperor. In the evening, the walls of Canela came into sight. The white gates glinted against the already waning sun. It was like a dream to have this journey done and over with. I trotted towards the gates where Akins were queued outside, waiting for their turn to enter the grand city. As I passed, several citizens looked my way and covered their noses, glaring at me irritably. Make way, I said. It felt odd to even hear my voice since I had refrained from talking for a long time. Citizens were stretched for yards. I couldn't wait that long, so I decided to head straight to the entrance. The guard stopped me. Get back in line, boy, the soldier said. His right palm was raised, his left hand eager to point his spear at me. I need to see the emperor, I said. The soldiers, around six of them, all laughed upon hearing me. Did his grace summon you? The soldier asked. I am here because he needs me, I said slowly. All around me, I could feel the eyes of the other citizens scrutinizing me from head to toe. My hair that used to dangle in front of my face and the long tangles that used to hang on my back was now tied. Nevertheless, I could not say that my hair had been tidied. The clothes that I wore had not been washed, and I had not taken a bath in a long time. Admittedly, it did seem like I was the type that an emperor would not summon. The soldier spat in disgust. Then, he veered his eyes away from me. Next, please, he shouted to the citizen behind me. A couple of Akins walked past without looking at me. They both had their noses covered. I need to see the emperor, I said again. Please. I've traveled a long way just to get here. Get in line. If you want to see the emperor, the first thing you should learn is that you have to obey the rules, the soldier said. Get back there boy, a woman said to me. She was fat and dark-skinned. I was instantly reminded of my mother. At that moment, I decided not to argue and went to the end of the line. As I settled at the back, all I could think of was that I was closer to my goal. I could wait. Wake up, boy, a man who reeked of tobacco said to me. The gates are opening again. You wouldn't want to miss your chance to see the Canellan Palace. 
I stood up from where I was lying and looked for my horse. Luckily, no one took him while I slept. I have heard that robbery was one of the crimes that were rampant in the city. The line was moving slowly, steadily. Only a few hours more before I would be able to meet with the emperor. The man ahead of me was eating bread. I was reminded that I had missed dinner and lunch and dinner the day before yesterday. Hey, I said. Can I have a piece of that? The man looked at me before handing me a piece of bread. That's the last you'll get from me, understand? He said. Food's expensive. Thank you, I said. Yeah, yeah. No need for that, he said. We're here, all of us because we want the same things. Food on the table. A job to let us live without getting hungry. Pass it on. Huh? The good deed, he said. When it is your turn. I chortled. I will remember that. The bread was crusty and hard. Without water, it didn't taste any good, but it was better than eating mud. I came here for the emperor, I said. Ain't we all? He said. No, I said. I mean, I want to be a part of his entourage. I want to be one of his personal shield. A soldier. The man chuckled, swearing under his breath. Why are you laughing? I asked. He shook his head and continued eating what was left of his bread. I was flushed and humiliated. Why are you laughing? I asked again. Nothing, he said. You're barely a lad. Maybe his grace will have you as a messenger or a kitchen aide, but a soldier? Do you even know how to hold a sword? His eyes glinted merrily. I am useful even without a sword, I said. Fat luck. He said, loudly laughing this time. But I will be useful to him. Go back to your mother, boy, someone else said. I turned to the person who said those words. If you don't keep your thoughts to yourself, you will not reach the Canellan Palace gates, I said. The man, a wide one with a bandage wrapped around his head, glared at me. His muscles bulged as he pulled a punch and threw it at me, hitting me straight in the face. I collapsed to the ground with blood dripping from the wound I thought had healed. It was from the fang of a hubbub, but the punch the man threw managed to rip it open again. I stared hatefully at the wide man. Now was not the time to use my power, I told myself. So, I stood up and rode my horse again. This time, I no longer talked to anyone. The crowd dispersed and fell back to the line. We moved slowly again. The sun had gone up, and it was scorching us all. The other citizens had a cloth covering their heads, and I had nothing to wrap my head with. It would be torture to wait this long but I had no choice. All of these efforts would pay off once I got to talk to the emperor. After a few hours, I finally reached the front of the line. I dismounted and walked toward the soldiers. I slipped silently between them. Wait, the soldier said. Your business with the palace? Same as the others, I said. Food. This time I knew better than to get myself in trouble. What's that wound? A scratch. Nothing serious. A bandit? I shook my head. Regular citizen, I said. All right. Register here. Write your name. The palace maintains the ins and outs of everyone. To the front, a man waited with sheets of paper. Here, he said. I stared at the list of names of citizens who had entered Canela. Too many. Then, I wrote my name and continued towards the palace. Mm -hmm.